So thank you, everybody. We, from the Groundwater Project, would like to thank all of you who are taking part on this amazing journey towards a better planet. And I'm your host, Everton de Oliveira. Imagine, just imagine that you are walking on water. Well, we may say that we all are. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Because underneath our feet, there is water that comprises 98% of the world's fresh water, ground water. So we may say that we are walker, walking on water somehow. What you are seeing just now is a dream becoming truth. You are part of history. Our online event received hundreds of suggestions for its title. We thank you all for the suggestions. And from them, a short list was submitted to a poll and one of them received the vast majority of the, vote, the votes, making groundwater visible. Again, thanks to all of you who participated in our poll. Welcome to the first Making Groundwater Visible, the event of the Groundwater Project. And during this month, this month, you will meet the greatest, Freeze and Cherry, Custodio and Llamas, the Marseille, and many more. People that helped shaping our professional lives and shape the good use and preservation of groundwater. We will all have the opportunity and the pleasure to meet the real persons behind their textbooks or Bibles, some may say. You will have many inspirational moments like the one from an eight-year-old child, Canadian child that raised money to put a well in Africa. Touching moments like volunteering work in rural community in Vietnam. Funny moments like when all freeze said he, that he was not offended when he thought he had written the most beautiful piece of prose in history. And John Cherry struck it all out. You will share the participations of speakers from several parts of the world and whose, and whose mother, language, mother tongues are so many and all offered us the opportunity to listen to experiences that bring us to the same goal, making groundwater, groundwater visible, bringing water to those who need and taking care of the quality of the water to preserve it for future generations. You will meet people from Canada, Russia, US, Libya, Brazil, Malta, Iraq, Germany, Uganda, France, Australia, Kazakhstan, England, Spain, Mexico, and so many other places. Bringing groundwater knowledge into many diverse languages, languages is the first step towards making the groundwater visible, easing the lives of young students, and potentializing the learning of the basic concepts. You are invited to help translate books into your own language. Yes, as simple as this. You create a group of friends, pick one of our books, and translate it we will distribute it on our website. It is good for your career and way better than that. It is great for the groundwater of, of your country and the world as a whole. What are you waiting for? Come to us, we count on you. Making the groundwater visible to all people in the world is an ambitious goal. Again, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Bad singer, I know. Just consider all of the Groundwater Project participants up to now. About 50,000 plus people from all over the world. When all of them put their intellect to produce good things groundwater, hyperintelligence is activated. Tell your friends, friends and foes. 
bring them all to no groundwater things. Hyperintelligence activate. When we all dream together, it's not dream, it's reality. We would like to thank all the authors who are donating their time and wisdom to create textbooks. To all the translators who are working to spread the groundwater knowledge to their languages. To all the individual donors and to our sponsors. TDS from Saudi Arabia, Hydroplan from Brazil, G360 from the University of Guelph, Canada, Solis, Canada, and Waterloo Barrier, Canada. And to all of you who like and share our posts, please tell your friends, sign up to our website, to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Share our posts, make the groundwater visible. We have here today two more dreamers, Ineke Kauwiji and John Cherry, members of the Groundwater Project Board. Ineke is based in Vancouver, Canada, and is doing a wonderful work helping organize our ideas and making the Groundwater Project go. John Cherry, well, does he need an introduction? I guess not. He is among many achievements that make us proud and jealous. The 2020 recipient of the Stockholm Water Prize, the Nobel Prize for Water. Please welcome John. You have the word now. Thank you all for sharing our goal. Thank you very much. John, please, your turn. Just trying to get it on um, the first slide. Slide show. No, first slide first. Hit first slide here first. Um, yeah. And then okay. view. Up there. Oh, and view. Right. View and slideshow. Slideshow. All right. Good. There you are. So thank you very much, Everton, for that spirited introduction to the the Groundwater Project. Uh, it's wonderful to hear it put uh, in that way, and it gives me very great pleasure to hear it uh, after these years of getting this project uh, off the ground. Uh, I'm the leader of the project, um, but the hard work is being done by many other people. Uh, this slide shows the members of the steering committee, and then there's an advisory committee. And then as Everton mentioned, there are the hundreds of people across the globe who are actually doing the work, preparing chapters, uh, editing, uh, translating, uh, coordinating, uh, et cetera. Uh, the steering committee uh, ranges in age from people who are around 50 to people around 80. Uh, and so we're covering uh, people in, in many countries and on a few continents, uh, and all of that is, is growing. So I'll just review some groundwater facts here. Many of you have heard these facts, but as Everton mentioned, groundwater makes up 99% of the Earth's liquid freshwater. So of course it's, it's everywhere. Uh, it's it's the, the commons, the water commons for the globe. And groundwater makes up nearly 50% of river flow and supports ecology. So it's the essence of our surface water systems, our lakes and our rivers and our wetlands. Groundwater provides drinking water for at least 50% of the global population. And given that the globe is gonna add 2 billion people over the next several decades, it's likely that this number will go up. Where else could the water come from? And about 2 billion people worldwide depend solely on groundwater for their basic needs. Um, uh, and that, that number also is increasing as the population expands. And more than a billion people lack safe drinking water, uh, but this total uh, is growing uh, because it's a very difficult problem to solve. And with population growth and with climate change, acerbating the problem. 
irrigated agriculture is founded on unsustainable groundwater use, and therefore our entire food system is threatened uh, with groundwater problems, primarily groundwater depletion. And the severity of groundwater problems is worsening uh, with climate change. Uh, and so in fact, we're headed for, for groundwater being the key component of what's referred to as the global impending uh, water crisis. So what's the problem with groundwater? Uh, groundwater problems are substantial in most countries and are at crisis level in many. The problems of groundwater depletion and pollution have become intertwined uh, and we really can't separate them. So in essence, it's a, it's a perfect storm coming at us. And groundwater problems have increasing complexity, uh, certainly beyond the current capabilities of our governance, of our management system, and of our politicians to appreciate uh, what the issues are. This quote was uh, given to me a few months ago by a colleague in China, Yan Jing. Our relationship with groundwater is a total mess. And I think that summarizes it uh, in just a, a few words. However, however, it's important to note that groundwater isn't yet a total mess. Uh, groundwater is an essential water resource uh, and it's not yet a total mess. Most groundwater is still safe to drink, but the global trend is deterioration, deterioration and this is alarming. So there's a very urgent need to change our relationship with groundwater. And as the uh, supreme guru of business management philosophy has stated, you can't manage what you don't understand. And the Groundwater Project is aimed at furthering understanding. Uh, the Groundwater Project has its mission uh, to promote groundwater learning. And the vision is to provide knowledge uh, for developing, uh, for contributing to humanity uh, and our ecosystems. Another quote provided by a colleague on the Groundwater Project, knowledge should be free and the best knowledge should be free knowledge, which is the, uh, the uh, theme of the Groundwater Project. The Groundwater Project is an act of hope in which anyone across the globe can participate towards a more sustainable planet. Uh, and the Groundwater Project currently engages over 300 participants. Uh, this, we're still getting started, actually, uh, from uh, five or six continents and many countries uh, in an unprecedented effort uh, towards what we say is the democratization of knowledge for all st stakeholders concerning all things groundwater. So who are we? The Groundwater Project had its beginning in 2017 with the development of the initial ideas and concepts. It's registered as a nonprofit corporation in Canada in 2019, and it's administered at the University of Guelph in Ontario, Canada. And it's committed to uh, making quality groundwater knowledge available free of charge in several languages across the globe. And this slide kind of summarizes the, the levels at which we are aiming. We can't really make groundwater visible unless groundwater knowledge and appreciation uh, starts with children. So we're publishing, publishing children's books. We're interested in disseminating knowledge uh, for children in schools, for high schools, and of course for universities and for the advanced level uh, for professionals uh, in the field. And we're publishing books uh, and we will have uh, videos to accomplish these books. And the whole idea is to synthesize knowledge, get the most updated knowledge synthesized by the best experts, but also make it understandable through the use of, of, of multimedia visual aids is the overall aim. So since it was initiated uh, three years ago, the Groundwater Project has progressed far enough uh, for us to uh, declare that we're up and running. Uh, we've been publishing books. We're able to attract the most talented people in the world to contribute. Uh, in that sense, we're, we're beyond the proof of concept stage. We're into the, into the growth stage to make the vision come true. And if you look at our website, you'll see that there are 10 books uh, published um, uh, by 10 different groups of experts, each one illustrated uh, and available at the current time in English 
And soon uh, we will be issuing uh, these books in translations uh, into as many languages as possible. So we published 10 books so far and have more than 200 books sort of in the pipeline in preparation uh, for publication in the next few years. Ranging all the way from the simplest concepts uh, in groundwater science on up to how these concepts get applied uh, to all of the problems that may interest us. Groundwater depletion, pollution, resource development, food production, uh, and much more. Uh, this is a graph uh, showing that, uh, and it's up to uh, the middle of December, but it shows our cumulative uh, downloads. Uh, we now have more than 30,000. Um, so we're finding then that there's an interest in our books. People are downloading them. Uh, and in essence, this graph is just getting going. The word needs to be spread so people will see what's out there and we need to keep adding books uh, every few weeks uh, or more frequently. And the books are available for PDF download and they're also available just as eBooks uh, on the website. Uh, and we're very pleased with the uh, geographic uh, distribution. I think as Everton mentioned, there's contacts with people in more than a hundred countries interested in communicating uh, with the Groundwater Project. In terms of the groundwater uh, framework, uh, this is a complicated slide and we won't dwell on it, but each one of these circles indicates a, a topic area or an interest area. At the top, we've got three circles and it indicates that we're interested in books being published for children, uh, for um, the general public, um, and publishing books of a scientific American category, uh, readable by anyone who wants to become informed, but who is not a groundwater expert. And all these other boxes at the bottom are for the groundwater experts, for the students around the world who want to learn about groundwater so they can uh, participate more directly in problem solving. And in our long-term plan, um, in addition to publishing books of a whole variety of types, we're certainly interested in collaborating with universities and developing course materials, partnerships with uh, all the types of organization uh, that are interested in furthering uh, groundwater uh, that relate to our mission. We're interested in, in making and accepting and in communicating videos on how to do things, just about anything that needs to be done in the groundwater field. We're hoping that we'll can help to distribute um, information on that. And we're interested in, in professional development. It's very difficult in this day and age to keep up to date in one's field, and we want to play a major role in that. Uh, and the other things as shown uh, on this, uh, on this uh, slide for the very grand vision. Of course, this grand vision will take many years to uh, bring it to fruition, and we're just at the starting point, and that's one of the main reasons for having this event, to get people across the globe on board uh, participating with us. I was a student um, in California back in the 1960s, and those were tumultuous times. There was uh, great pressure for environmental change, great pressure for social change. And this leader of one of the movements, Leroy, Leroy Eldridge Cleaver, uh, leader of the Black Panther movement at that time, that time made this momentous a statement. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I think this, um, this uh, is well stated for the groundwater problem. And the groundwater project then is aimed at allowing us all to be part of the solution, uh, as opposed to just being part of the problem. So I thank you for your attention and uh, look forward to the, the discussion uh, that can go on around this uh, excellent event. I turn it over to you. Everybody. Please stop. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, before I, I pass the word to Ineke, I'd just like to mention that we have people from many places of the world. I'll, I'll mention some here. I hope I don't forget anyone. We have people from Guatemala, Algeria, Brazil, Ecuador, Venezuela, um, South Africa, Bolivia, Tunisia, Morocco, Colombia, Portugal, Spain, Argentina, US, Turkey, Latvia, and many more. That's amazing. Thank you very much for all of you uh, for participating in our project. Please, Ineke, uh, I hope all this crowd don't make you nervous. 
Your turn. <laughs> Thank you, Everton. I, I just want to say a few words. I'm, 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 I'm just, just to say, I'm, I'm very thankful to be part of the of the Groundwater project. Um, it has been an uh, involvement. I'm, I'm very happy, uh, happy about um, uh, the, just the ability to to contribute to the very important overall mission. Just to to create uh, a groundwater conscientiousness. <laughs> Um, um, and awareness uh, uh, globally, actually. Um, myself, as a practitioner of, um, in, in, in the field of, of hydrogeology and, and, and groundwater management, I really developed a great interest in, in the ability of transferring knowledge and, um, and, and groundwater awareness to, uh, to a broader audience, just to to, to build the bridge between all the knowledge and uh, what's out there and how that can be translated to to basically everyone and everywhere. So once again, I'm, I'm very thankful to be part of this project and I'm looking forward to the event. Thank you, Everton. Thank you very much. Well, John, now we, we have our session is, is open, to, uh, open to questions from people. Would you like to say something before we start the questions from the, the audience, John, please? Oh, sure. So Aniki mentioned that we're, we're in the business of translating. We're in the business of translating science uh, and uh, done by scientists and experience uh, obtained by all the practitioners across the globe. We're in the business of translating that information uh, into forms that make it accessible so that the information isn't lost, so that the experience of the older generation uh, can be there for the younger generation. Uh, and when I mentioned that, you know, the steering committee and the other committees that are doing the major work on this, we range in age from, from 50s to 80s. Uh, and, and of course, what we want is to get the younger generation in, involved. Uh, at the early stage, uh, this is uh, being pushed the hardest by people over 50. And for it to be successful, of course, we need people from all ages strongly engaged. Um, so I think I think that's uh, enough for me, Everton. Thank you. Uh, well, come on, never enough for you. You're the star here, Jeff. Don't worry. Uh, well, we have more people here from Israel, from Peru. People keep keep you know we're adding more people to that. Uh, uh, I'll have a first question from for you, John. Uh, what about the? People that are watching us from a distance, that they, they, they want to participate. Uh, is, anything, is anyone uh, just too small to participate in our project? You know, or you think anyone could join us? What is someone has the feeling, oh, come on, only these big guys, I'm, I'm, I don't have a chance. What do you think? Everton, that's a really good question. So the project got going. Uh, with experts, with me inviting expert colleagues around the world to write chapters uh, on expert topics. And of course, we, as we expand to make the information available to others, uh, we, need, we need participants who are going to help to do the, do the translations. And as we move forward with an emphasis that will gradually evolve from producing books, you know, in a normal sense, but they'll be online, will be expanding to produce videos to explain things. Um, and furthermore, we, we most textbooks uh, that, that are out there that people use are focused on, you know, on, on English or Spanish, and they're relatively narrow in their global view. So we're very much looking forward to people sending us in uh, useful information on the view from elsewhere, uh, photographs, little video clips, um, uh, documents that should be translated from another language into English. There can be no end to the possibilities, I think, in, in, uh, in the ways in we, which we can raise awareness and understanding about groundwater. And furthermore, we hope that as we move forward, we'll have books published that concern groundwater conditions in each country around the globe. Uh, uh, and, and of course, many, many countries, such as Canada, have books on groundwater in Canada. But we, we want to produce books that help explain the groundwater in, say, a country like Canada uh, for, the, for, the, for the readers around the world. Uh, we want to basically make groundwater ideas and groundwater problems and groundwater conditions uh, global. 
And, and for that, then we need all sorts of participation and advice. Oh, and criticism. So as we produce our materials, it, we're getting it out there. And, uh, and the authors work, we work very, very hard. And when we finally get a book done, we're very relieved. And usually we're proud of ourselves, but, but only for a few moments once we start to look at it and realize it can always be better. So we'll be looking forward to people commenting, you know, here's a mistake, or you can make this clear, or you've been biased, or you're ignoring the issues in other countries. So there'll be all sorts of possibilities for people to interact with us. And of course, we, we, we're fallible. We, we, we will have problems. That's, that's why we have the hyper-intelligence need. Everybody <laughs> participating with us so we can always get better, John. That's a good point, great point. Oh, I might also mention that, that groundwater has remained is a, invisible, it's out of sight, it's out of mind, and our, our water agencies in general don't do very well about groundwater, maybe in the odd country, but not in general, uh, and our politicians, in, in almost without exception, uh, are groundwater ignorant. So we need help, I think, in trying to explain groundwater to everybody. And so the movement to make groundwater visible has to start with school children. Uh, so even the school children can speak to the politicians and voice their voice their views. Very good. We have we have more questions here. Let me let me see uh, before uh, I go. Uh, another question that we have that I think I, I, I might take it if you don't mind, John. Uh, Christian yeah. Christian Verde Reynoso. Yes, us. If he, if he could translate books from English to Spanish. I can take that if you don't mind. Yes, of course yeah. we, can. We, have many, we have a list of books, the 10 books that are available there. Some of them are already in the hands of, of Spanish-speaking hydrogeologists to translate, but some of, them, some of them are not. You have to suggest the ones that you are interested in, and we'll be glad to, to, to accept you as a translator. That's how it works. Um, what we expect from translators is that they have a good knowledge of hydrogeology, of the jargon in their own language, so they can translate into the proper terms of that language, right? And also that they have a very good, uh, let's say, understanding, good writing in his mother tongue. Why? Because we want the books to be readable, you know, readable by anyone. It has to be a good, to, a good reading for, for people who study. So we have that uh, concern when producing the originals and then to keep the same uh, spirit when translated. Okay, so that's what we need. John, you want to add something? Ineke, please. I'm good. Yeah, so, so as you look at the books we're publishing, you'll see there's great emphasis on diagrams on figures, on sketches, of schematic representations of, of, of processes and principles. And so we're, as you look at these books and you look at a diagram, you may, you may find the diagram confusing, uh, or you may think that you've, you may conclude that you've seen diagrams that actually explain the point, but do it better. So we'll be certainly looking for, for um, basically sending your diagrams. If you see diagram X on you know, page Y in one of our books and you feel that you've got a better idea to make the point, then send it to us. So we're viewing this adventure uh, in, in education as being a, a two-way street. And because it's electronic and because there's no profit being made um, and we're volunteer based, in fact, we, we can do things to further understanding that is not possible in any other, any other format. Very good. We have here uh, some more. Uh, we have one uh, <clears throat> from Namibia. Josefina Hamutoko. Greetings from Namibia. I like the books. So easy to understand and really nice diagram figures for teaching. Thank you, Josefina, for your nice words. I have a question for you, John. Uh, it's from Maria Laura Gomez. She asks, how much do you think the politics influences groundwater management. Well, politics when it comes to groundwater is all, well, in most countries, it's the overriding item. 
So I'm from Canada, a very relatively wealthy country. We have lots of expertise, but in terms of groundwater management and governance, we function at a very low level. We function at a low level because groundwater has absolutely no traction amongst our political class. None of the big cities in Canada are dependent on groundwater, only smaller cities and people out in rural areas. So 30% of Canadians, in fact, you know, drink groundwater to one degree or another, uh, but that doesn't get registered in the political process. So, and of course, we, we scientists and engineers are always complaining about the politicians and we're always complaining about the governance, but, but the, the role of the groundwater project is to bring education. Um, if the public aren't understanding the problems, if the school children aren't understanding the problems, if the school children aren't discussing the problems with their parents, uh, then in fact, we can't get traction. So the political issue, that, that's, the, that's the symptom, uh, and then the cause is understanding. Good question. Exactly, totally agree with John. We, we've been discussing this already uh, on a groundwater project. And it's our goal, if, if, we, if we have more people you know, aware of the groundwater problems, and not only hydrogeologists, because we, we are a community talking to ourselves, the goal of the groundwater project is to broaden the, the, the reach of the groundwater knowledge to people that are not hydrogeologists, people that know that groundwater is part of their lives. You know, we have that in some places. And usually, we only have that happening when the, the water, you know, the water is missing, when, when you have a drought on when the, or when the well goes dry, right? So that's when the problem arises and, and the politics come, come into place. We have to work before that so we can participate into politics and having people uh, being aware of that and making groundwater part of the politics. Everton, I'll, I'll add to this then. So many countries are quite backward when it comes to groundwater, Canada being one. And as a Canadian, then how am I going to go about trying to improve this situation? And I think the most powerful thing will be to have books published uh, about those, those systems of governments, about those countries that are actually doing some things at, at the high level that are being successful. So we want, to, we want to ferret out across the globe all the examples of those groups, of those countries, of those provinces, uh, of those states that are doing things in an exemplary way. And, 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 and because we're going to operate in many languages and we're getting communications across the globe, that's hopefully will be one of our big, our big contributions. So citizens can point out to their politicians that here's how it's being done better uh, in another country. Perfect, perfect. We have a question here from, from Paulo Negron uh, from Brazil. Many of the developments in the environmental field have been driven by major crises. That's just what we're talking about. Groundwater being invisible. Do you think we are going to have an unprecedented global water crisis before the general population and policymakers really wake up to our cause? That's a question to you, John. Yes, I, I think we're headed into the trajectory is towards major crises. Um, where, you know, climate change is bringing droughts and the recent drought in California and the recent drought in South Africa, those were short droughts. The big droughts are coming. And when the big droughts come and even the short droughts come, the only water you actually have available to distribute is groundwater. Um, and, um, and as one of my slides mentioned, you know, groundwater underpins irrigation agriculture. The irrigation agriculture as we're doing it is totally unsustainable. And we here in Canada and elsewhere, when you go to your super, supermarket and buy your vegetables and fruit, in many cases, it's been grown unsustainably uh, with uh, over pumped groundwater. And, and so it, it, uh, as soon as there's a drought, like in California a few years ago and in South Africa in 2017, all sorts of attention got focused on groundwater. And then as soon as it rains and water is in the reservoirs, then the, the political pressure eases off and and the, the speed at which we need improvements uh, declines immensely. And, and the Groundwater Project will be publishing uh, books then that draw attention to all the different parts of, of the system that, that uh, 
are unsustainable and need attention. Thank you, John. We have, we have a, an interesting question here uh, from Paulo Casado. Are there any plans or thoughts on getting the project looking into open source, community-oriented groundwater software? Well, um, the, the, one, one, of the, one of the thrusts uh, that we'll pay more attention to uh, a few months down the road is open source software. And there are a number of organizations across the globe that are doing their best to get open, open uh, source software available to people. And the Groundwater Project wants to be a major contributor to making people aware of, of what is the software and what does it do, um, what does it not do, and where you can get it. So we are in favor of everything being free. Uh, and in that sense, then we want to put some emphasis on, on the accessibility and even eventually in the future, you're helping to develop uh, open source software. I agree, I agree. Well, uh, just to, to, to add to that, uh, of course, uh, I know that if you mention that, you have second thoughts. Why not uh, starting a group to offer this uh, community, you know, uh, open open source uh, software to the groundwater project. You have to keep in mind that the groundwater project it's a volunteer based uh, institution. We're offering books that other authors are producing to us. We can offer software for free if we have volunteers creating that. We can create that. We can have people working on that. But remember. We are short of staff and we need volunteers to help put that in place. Definitely would be uh, very happy to distribute and to have the software reaching out to as many people as possible. But then we still need more uh, volunteers to help bring in this to, to, to reality. Okay. Uh, I have another question. Sandra Garcia Gabas, she says, I think we will make groundwater more visible if we start to educate our primary school students for this subject. What do you think, John? Well, absolutely. I have um, four grandkids from the age of uh, 14 to 17, uh, and uh, they've learned uh, absolutely nothing uh, about groundwater in their entire educational process. Hard to imagine, 99% of fresh water is groundwater, and my grandkids wouldn't know what the groundwater table is uh, if I were to uh, ask them. Uh, and, and so the whole educational system is out of whack. They learn about geography, they learn about the oceans, they take courses on biology. Uh, and so the groundwater project then has to do its, its very best to correct this, and, and to do that, we need to make materials available, all the way from uh, children's books to comic books to to simple videos. That's that's so. That's although we're starting at books at the university level, uh, these other uh, levels of books um, are important. And I might let Einike, uh comment on that further if she cares to. Um, well, so so uh, thank you. Yeah. So so one one aspect is really what we are looking for is uh, looking into is uh, all kinds of ways how to make groundwater knowledge accessible to basically to youth, to children as well as high school level. So all in so. Um, and, and that's also, I think, what we discussed earlier about involvement. We really like to see involvement from uh, from even at, at, at that level to, to, to try to... The key to this is to, to the, the ability to visualize groundwater knowledge. That's key to the success in order to transfer and to that knowledge and create that in knowledge and to make groundwater um, uh, basically more accessible for people, uh, for the young generation to, to understand. So um, again, we really like to, we really have this focus on, on, on children and uh, um, um, youth as well, so. I could pick up on that then. The key word there is visualization. And we university professors, I mean, we're not trained in visualization. 
I mean, we draw things on blackboards and we can take photographs and we can, we can make up things for books, but we're talking about visualization, visualization for, uh, for school children and parents and whatnot. And that's a different type of problem. Um, uh, and, and right now is one of the most important. So that, that's an example of where we could use help. We want to be able to present things so that people can visualize it and it's out of sight. So the visualization process then is the key. I totally agree, John. We have been working with this visualization for, for so long. And we need, we need people that actually, we need some people that understand uh, the software to produce nice visualizations, right? Animations, we mean. Uh, but, but the ones that are close related or that reproduce with high fidelity the, the, the science. Problem is that if it's sometimes, you know, uh, the visualizations tend to be artistic, but they, you know, stay a bit far from reality. And if we're trying to send a proper message to people, we have to show them properly. So ideas are welcome and finished products are also welcome. We can embed them into our books, into our products. You may, as a, if you're watching us, you may send us some, you know, previews or short samples that we can work with you. We're accepting, you know, this is an open, an open project. We need volunteers and people with good ideas and nice finishings. We want to have high quality, uh, high quality products on groundwater and anyone, it's, it's welcome. As I mentioned, hyper intelligence, activate, okay? But what I just like to add, so what we are look, also looking for is uh, people with a very creative mind you don't even have to be in in, a crown, in the working or, or studying in the field of groundwater but what is key to the again to the children's book and even the introductory books a way to uh, like a picture says a thousand words right um it's people who are very good and maybe uh, making comics right um just another way we are looking at all kinds of different ways to visualize groundwater and make it more, uh, um, you may say, dynamic in a way. So um, um, young artists who, who, who like to take the challenge to, um, to explain uh, uh, what groundwater is in, 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 a, in a simple figure, in a, in a, in a nice drawing, um, we are really um, looking for that kind of input as well. So. Thank you. As a, as a follow-up as a follow-up to uh, an event uh, a little bit like this a couple of months ago, we received a, a comic book from India in English uh, prepared for the local people to understand how to how to prevent runoff from running off too fast, how to get into the ground. Yes. A nice comic book. That was an example, and it just came out of the blue. People sent it in, so we'll be certainly interested in any comics or any children's books or anything out there um, that are along these lines and in any language because we can you know have them translated into the other languages good uh, by the way we have a session on intensive use where we have a, a representative from india i forgot to mention here and we have another one from malta so this what john is mentioning we will be here uh stay tuned and you and you can see that i have one point here Khalil Al Samurai, actually, I would recommend you. He's from Libya and he's, he participated in one of our, our sessions. He's going to be here with us uh, in our session. Okay, Khalil. He mentioned that he thinks books are not enough to, to disseminate conscious education. We need uh, to have another sources. It's just what we, we're talking about, exactly. And Paulo Negron, uh, and the same topic mentioned that, what about a video documentary to help spread the awareness about the need to protect groundwater? What about getting in front of policy makers? He mentioned something like Al Gore documentary. Well, I may, I may start that, John, and you can pick from <laughs> there. Yes, we would love to do that. We would love to have not only a video, but we would, like to, we would love to have uh, someone, you know, as known as Al Gore to spread the news about groundwater. The first step 
that we need is, is sponsorship. Videos and documentaries are very expensive. And today, one of the things that we have is that the internet is flooded with visual material. And if you don't have a good enough material, people just don't care. They don't watch. We, don't, we won't get the views that we want to spread the news around groundwater, about groundwater. We have to produce high quality material. And to do that, we need funding. And that's what we're doing now. We just had some funding from some important sources. I'd like to mention the TDS company from Saudi Arabia, Hydroplan, G360, and uh, Waterloo Barrier, and Solings. Yes, but we need many more. We need many more companies joining us so we can produce this high quality material and we can pay for it. Yeah, John. Eric, to follow that up then, although we're seeking hundreds and hundreds of additional volunteers, for volunteerism to be expensive, we, we have to we have to have some professional paid for linkages. So uh, we, there's got to be a certain ratio between the staff that we can hire because it's their job to do it every day and the volunteers. Uh, and, and that's really why we're, we're seeking funds. We're not seeking funds to not become a, a volunteer organization. We're seeking funds to become a bigger and better uh, volunteer organization. Definitely, definitely. Well, the, we have to keep in mind that uh, we, as hydrogeologists, our core business is hydrogeology. And we need people, artists, and we need people that are not really uh, uh, hydrogeologists. So they have to work together. And some of the products that we have to produce will have to be, you know, uh, produced by professionals. We have to hire companies to produce in, in the speed that we need, with a good quality that we need. And not all of them could be volunteers. So as, a, as any NGO, we need staff, hire staff to produce work. I could also mention, Eriton, that even the smallest contributions from individuals are important. Uh, in, in a way, we're like a political party. You know, political parties show their strength by having, uh, you know, basically the the general public contributing as individuals. So we can say we're the groundwater political party and we need contributions from the grassroots. <laughs> great, great. Well, look at that. We just just got a message from Yannick Greskola. Sorry, my German is not good. Uh, he says, hello from Germany. Great project. I can offer to generate groundwater animations, preferably with the open source USGS modeling software and Python. Let me know. There you go. We won't forget you, Yannick. We'll get, we'll reach out to you. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, guys, uh, you have any other questions? We, we are very, uh, we're reaching to, to, to the end of this, this presentation because we're going to start the next one with John Cherry and Al Fries talk about the, the famous book, the book that gave us the introduction to this project. So, John, could you say some uh, final statements to our audience? We're going to, to, to close this session in a few minutes. Well, I don't think there's much. This has been very good coverage, Everton, and the questions have been uh, wonderful. So my, my final uh, remark is, you know, please sign up, please download books, please, uh, you know, join uh, join our, our uh, uh, emailing list, etc. As as we build a community, then that builds credibility, and uh, credibility is needed then for us to really get our mission uh, going in, in in the ways that we're talking about here. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you everybody Thank you. for attending this. Uh, uh, this session, and I hope they'll mention it to all their colleagues. <laughs> yes, they will. I'm pretty sure. Inike, please, your turn. Your final uh, word. I, I, just, I just want to say, everybody, thank you for attending this uh, this event. And uh, I just wanted to, to emphasize: please do spread the the word because we rely on you to to connect, make, make to connect to all your um, uh, uh, to, 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 to to people in your countries to make aware that the groundwater project exists and the way we move forward we really rely on input from everybody in all the countries to make this really 
a global a global endeavor so um please so again please spread the word thank you thank you thank you for all for participating in that uh as i mentioned if you if you see the our our post today you know uh, on stories on facebook you can see our message what i'm uh, what i'm telling you there is that you are part of history we're making history right now exactly under your eyes we're making history so participate that's what we're going to deliver to the next generations a better world by doing some work, volunteer work, you feel better. The world will become a better place. Okay, that's what we need. So, if you if you see, uh, we we just published here on our YouTube the link for the next session. The next session uh, is just so good. You have, you know, I've, I've never seen that before. We have uh, Al Freeze and John Cherry together. Well, when John, was the last time you were together? Don't spoil, you mentioned on the next session, okay? So, they will be together, it's fun. It's the greatest book, the, the, both authors are there talking nice stories about how the book was produced and how it became what it is. You know, the, one of the major books in groundwater ever, okay? So, thank you guys, thank you very much for participating and I'll see you soon. Bye, thank you.